So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to um, today's speakers. And um, first and foremost, representing TechSpace and putting the questions to our guest speakers today is um, Marcy Yamasaki. Now, Marcy's been working with TechSpace and some of the world's largest brands for around four years. Uh, she's currently responsible for business development, strategy and support. She's over 17 years of experience in the apparel and consumer products industries and has worked closely with key accounts to optimize use and functionality of the TechSpace system, while also helping to drive sales, marketing and technical support. Our guest speaker from Perla Zumi is Nicole Onyebeni. Nicole is a material developer who's been lucky enough to fuse her love of product creation and the outdoors into the perfect career path. Having worked for many outdoor brands, she's been able to contribute to teams, both small and large, and has gained a new appreciation for quality products. As a material developer at Pearl Izumi, uh, she spends a majority of her time seeking out new materials, ensuring best in class quality and collaborating with teams, both domestically and internationally. Through this role, she's been able to foster a love of data management and all things text based. She utilizes TechSpace on a daily basis to help monitor new developments, uh, development testing, product testing, and color approvals. Nicole has been working with TechSpace for about the past two and a half years and is continually brainstorming more ways to use the system to increase efficiencies in her workday. She's an advocate for TechSpace within her company and has successfully implemented the use of the system with her QA counterparts in Asia as well as her internal pattern engineering team, and most recently, the trim development team. Um, and from LL Beam, we have uh, Bethany Bonney. Bethany's been in Techstars for 23 years. She started out as a quality assurance analyst at Patagonia. She headed east to work for LL Bean, where she opened and managed the LL Bean testing lab. For 19 years, her tenure at LL Bean has spanned positions in product research and testing, international merchandising, to her current role in research and development as a raw material specialist. For the last four years, Bethany has also been a member of LL Bean's business transformation team, helping with the pro process design um, of their new PLM and text-based systems. So I'll now pass you through to Marcy, who will guide you through today's presentation. I hope you enjoy. Thanks, Heather. And thanks to everyone who's joining us today. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day to speak with us. So I'm really excited to be here today and have this discussion about how you can maximize innovation without compromising quality. And as Heather mentioned, we'll be talking today with two very knowledgeable women and text-based clients from renowned companies LL Bean and Pearl Izumi. However, before I get started with the main part of the conversation, allow me to introduce who TechSpace is for those of you who aren't familiar with us. TechSpace is a company rich in apparel industry and business process expertise. And our solution addresses a market need related to product innovation, quality, and compliance that's separate and distinct from other solutions in the marketplace. From raw materials all the way through to finished product and compliance testing, TechSpace provides tools for both internal and external stakeholders. And you'll see from our ecosystem slide here that we're really able to unite your suppliers as well as your testing labs and your internal brand members in each of the areas that you see in that inner circle. Our solution is web-based. We are a software as a, software as a service solution, and we span the full product development process. As I mentioned, from materials management capabilities to test tracking tools, color, and even compliance, as well as offering secure vendor collaboration. And our full suite is available all out of the box to quickly address your pain points and deliver rapid business benefits. So today our panelists will be talking about quality and innovation by using some of our text-based solutions. So without further delay, let's get the conversation started. Both LL Bean and Pearl Izumi stand behind their products with a lifetime guarantee. 
And doing this requires meticulous material testing and attention to details. But how do you maintain quality and keep ahead of the curve with innovation? Allow me to introduce Bethany Bonney from L.O. Bean and Nicole Onyebeni from Perlazumi, who will answer this question for us. Bethany, would you please say hello to our audience and introduce yourself? Thanks, Marcy, and hello, everyone. Um, I want to thank Heather for the nice introduction that she did earlier. I'd like to introduce L.L. Bean in case some of the listeners don't know who we are. Um, <clears throat> we're an outdoor gear and apparel company that was founded in 1912 by Leon Leonwood Bean. Uh, the company began selling a single product, the main hunting shoe, which we still sell today. Bean is family owned and LL's great grandson, Sean Gorman, is our chairman of the board of directors. And for 105 years, Bean has upheld the original values of its founder, including his dedication to quality, customer service, and love for the outdoors. We have 34 stores in 16 states across the United States, along with 25 stores in Japan. Our 220,000 square foot retail store in Freeport, Maine is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year and welcomes more than 3 million visitors every year. Thank you, Bethany. Thanks for that introduction. And Bethany, just to let the audience get to know you a little bit more, what would you say gets you excited about being a raw material specialist? Mm. Um, I would say have to see the product that you spent many hours working on. Uh, you work on them with your product development, your design, and your lab, and your sourcing partners. When you actually see it come real, it's pretty exciting. Um, you work with the fabric so much, you learn their strengths, and their, you learn how to fix, fix their weaknesses. And um, being able to see that product work the way you knew it would on a customer, it's pretty exciting. Wonderful. I bet that is. So, Nicole, would you mind introducing yourself and um, saying hello to the audience? Yeah, thanks, Marcy. Um, so, hi, guys. My name is Nicole Onubaini, um, and like Heather spoke to earlier, I am a material developer at Pearl Azumi, and I've been lucky enough to be working in the outdoor industry now for about six years, um, starting my career up in Oregon, working my way down to the, the coast to California, now to find my home in sunny Colorado. So that's where we're stationed. Um, I'm a huge outdoor enthusiast and I love spending as much time in the outdoors as possible. Um, my love for the outdoors really kind of inspires me to develop materials uh, for an outdoor company. They kind of help you stay outside longer and provide the user an unobstructed experience while spending their time outdoors, which is a huge asset to have. Um, when working for a company like Pearl. At Pearl, um, it's our main goal to craft and deliver the best in class cycling apparel. Our company is built on innovation. So what we're constantly doing is looking for opportunities to kind of outdo ourselves um, by providing our consumers products that are continually being enhanced based off of our user feedback, um, our category needs, and even marketplace trends. And so Overall, it's a super challenging but also rewarding environment to be a part of, so I'm just really happy to be here. And we're happy to have you, Nicole. Um, and I'll ask you the same question. What would you say gets you excited about being a material developer? Yeah, great question. So I feel like I kind of have maybe a unique experience. Um, I actually learned how to sew at a very young age, and um, during that process, I was kind of like in awe of when you take a material and turn it into a three-dimensional object. So taking a two-dimensional shape and creating something that could be worn and shown off kind of just was really inspiring. And even to this day, being a part of that process is extremely inspiring and I couldn't be more excited to be a part of it. Um, I also find it super rewarding, like Bethany said. When you see a consumer um, wearing a product that you personally worked on, people don't realize how long and um, how much blood and sweat goes into material development. And working for a company like Pearl, there is extremely high expectations of material performance. So when you see a consumer out there riding, wearing something you worked on, it's 
so rewarding. Um, and so, yeah, that's what really gets me fired up. I bet that's awesome. I, I can't imagine how cool it is. And I bet both of you would not be as excited to see your products in the field if you didn't know how much hard work that you put into them. So thanks again so much for being here today. And based on the number of attendees that I see that we have on the webinar today, it looks like having an opportunity to learn firsthand from industry experts never goes out of style. So let's get this conversation started. And Nicole, I'd like to start out with a question for you. So how does Pearl Izumi define quality and what are some of the challenges that you've encountered along the way? Great question. Uh, for Pearl Izumi, kind of as Marcy spoke to earlier, we have a lifetime guarantee. So what's interesting about this is that we actually allow our consumers to define what they feel qualifies as a lifetime. Um, so that could be 10 wares, or that could be 100 wares, or that could be 200 wares. We don't really define um, what that means. Therefore, quality is really important because we need to make sure our materials are lasting that lifetime. Um, so here at Pearl, we have extremely rigorous testing requirements. Uh, we start here at our office um, with the development and commercialization process. And through this, we're continually maintaining um, and checking the quality of the materials to ensure that what we saw at our initial development is what we're seeing through the entire commercialization process. Uh, one large challenge of this that we've faced is actually sharing information. So like I said, at our main office, we do initial development testing and we manage the quality and testing of a material all, all the way through SMS production. After that, we then share information with our factories and our quality team in Asia, and we allow them to kind of take over. So in the past, it's been really difficult to provide these teams with all the data they need to make the best informed decisions um, on their end. And now, since we are all using one system to analyze the data, uh, they have all the information in one spot. So they have all the development information, all the SMS information, and then they can use that to really dictate what um, decisions they need to make during bulk production. So that's really powerful and a great benefit that we've been able to see. Um, another huge challenge we run into with our garments specifically is that they're extremely tight fitting. Um, so many of you might know a last stain is altered when exposed to different heating scenarios. Um, and through a development a material production, uh, the exposure to heat can vary slightly, which we've actually found has a huge impact on the overall stretch of the material. So another big challenge um, of quality and something we're able to track and manage is the stretch and recovery of all these materials. So what we're able to do is um, track that through the development, SMS, and production cycles to ensure that the stretch and recovery is staying the same through our prototyping and our production to really make sure that what our consumers are taking home and trying on is fitting exactly the same as what we saw here when we were doing our, fitted, or our fittings here in our office. So those are some of the challenges and um, the things that we've been able to do to kind of enhance them or make them easier to manage through. Sure, and you know, thanks for sharing those. Some of those are unique challenges that um, I'm sure a lot of our audience members may also be experiencing, so that's really great. But I, I want to move on to this next thing that you mentioned, and that's regarding processes. So, so you mentioned process as a piece of your ability to achieve quality standards. Do you mind talking a little bit more about that? Yeah, great question. So I'm a bit of a process and data nerd, so people that know me will kind of learn that quickly. Um, but process here is super important to us. Um, by having a really clear process, it makes uh, all of your work um, a lot more clear. It makes sure you're checking all your boxes and not duplicating any extra work, so it's very important. Uh, at Pearl, we start our process at the development stage. During this stage, we select potential materials, we test them, and we build material specifications that are specific to an individual fabric. 
We then, um, part of our process is to actually share these findings with our mill partners so they're aware of what we will be expecting of them for all future production runs, so our SMS, our prototypes, and our bulk production. After that, we then move to SMS stage where we're able to first see an entire production run. Uh, what's unique about us is that we actually order an entire production run at the SMS stage. What's great about this is um, we've already set our expectations during the development stage and we are verifying that they're achievable once we go into a full production run, which is what's really important about this is that we're able to validate a material and kind of assess quality risks um, before we even go into bulk production. So that's really important. Um, we then house all this information, uh, like I spoke to earlier, in text-based. So it can be shared with our factories and our quality team, and they have all of the all of the data they will need to support their decisions out in the field. So setting these clear expectations, in my opinion, makes everyone's job a lot easier and better informed. So super important for process. Thanks for sharing that, Nicole. And at TechSpace, we certainly believe that setting up repeatable processes is a key factor for success. Um, there's a couple other questions that you touched on that we'll come back to in a few minutes. But let's get some perspective from Bethany for a minute. So Bethany, how about you? How does L.L. Bean drive innovation through their testing lab? Um, thanks, Marcy. Yeah, we have, L.L. Bean's unique um, that we have a 4,000 square foot testing facility right on campus. Um, so we're able to get data right away. A uh, bulk of the testing we do is development testing, though we do some uh, quality and production, but a bulk of it is development testing. So. One of the things that was important for us when we were looking um, at systems like TechSpace, um, we needed a repeatable process. Everybody needed to put data in the same way. Um, we needed a system that talked to our PLM system. And so when we landed on TechSpace, that was one thing we did is we looked at our processes and we said what was important and made sure everybody was putting in the data the same way. We're kind of of the mindset of rigid data, flexible reporting. Um, so every all the data is put in the same way, but how you report that information and use that information when you're meeting with developers and um, your design and your sourcing group is important. Um, for us, I don't know, innovation and textiles, textiles are funny, they're kind of gray, they're not black and white. So you have to understand your the information and what you're hoping to get out to the consumer and knowing how to tweak those results to say, oh, okay, I'm still able to get a quality product out to my consumer, but I'm not, um, we, we have set standards, but we're not exactly in the standards where we want to be, but we know we're not compromising quality. And that's the part of innovation where you have to take a risk. And that's where having the data all um, accurate. So when you get together as a group, you, you feel confident in the information you're using to be able to make an accurate decision. That's great, Bethany. Thank you. Um, one of the things that you mentioned that I'd like to zero in on is that ability to collaborate. Um, would you mind expanding a little bit on collaboration at LL Bean? Sure. Um, collaboration is really important. Um, I think everyone on the team has to be okay with taking risks, especially when it comes to innovation. Um, and that comfort level comes with the trust in the data that you're using um, when trying to make the decisions. Um, and again, text base is a really big part of that process for us because we know that all the data is going in and, and we're able to extract the reports and get good live data. Um, that we can share with our groups. And we don't work in silos here. We do, we get together as a group. It, we have representatives from our raw material sourcing, from our lab, from product development and design. And we all say, hey, this is, what is our vision? What, is, what do we hope to achieve and how are we going to achieve it? And using that data that we get from TechSpace is instrumental. Wonderful. and. Um, I think that is something that all of our audience members probably can relate to is that um, 
there's so many different areas within organizations that need to be able to access this information and sometimes it's hard to do that um, and you're having to do it in different ways like through email and PDF documents or spreadsheets so um, that's great insight for um, all of the members to hear. So Nicole, I'm going to bounce back to you because I think that talking a little bit about the way that Perlazumi is also enhancing collaboration, both inside and outside their organization, is pertinent to this conversation. Yeah, great question. So uh, very similar to Bethany, we collaborate extensively with internal members that don't always have access to our data system. Um, so, like many teams, we have a pattern team and a development team, and with the information we're able to document in TechSpace, it makes it really easy to export a really clear and consistent format, which we then are able to share with both our pattern and development teams, so they better understand how a material will, will perform and interact on the body before they even start working with it. So, that's a really cool thing that we're able to do here. Um, they're able to use that information to kind of adjust fits, um, adjust patterns. Uh, they're also able to use that information to kind of better understand how materials are being paired together. So in the system, we uh, are even capturing trim data. So we can look to see if a fabric is going to pair well with an elastic before it even gets into a style. So that really helps us put our best foot forward. Uh, we also collaborate internally, or I would say externally, but internally, um, so ex with external um, business partners, but internal with TechSpace. <laughs> we use the TechSpace Connect access with a lot of our um, high volume mill partners and then also our quality team. So we're able to collaborate with them directly through TechSpace. Uh, the great benefit of this is that we can work with our mill partners in a live system. So like Marcy spoke to earlier, TechSpace is a web-based platform that's continually changing. So any changes I make on my side, my mill will be able to see immediately. Um, what's great about this is when I set a testing requirement or a test request, uh, the the fabric mills are able to go into the system and have a really clear understanding of what's expected of them, what test requirements we want them to test the material for. Um, and this helps eliminate a ton of back and forth and takes out any, any need for guesswork. So when you're working outside of a system or sending Excel spreadsheets back and forth, a lot of confusion can happen. Um, and when you work directly in the system, it helps eliminate a lot of that. So that's how we're collaborating both internally and externally, and then also how we're collaborating within TechSpace and uh, with people who aren't using TechSpace as well. Thank you, Nicole. Um, is it fair to say that TechSpace is a significant technology solution for your company? Yes. <laughs> um, TechSpace I use almost every single day, um, and it really is vital to my success as a material developer. Um, as an organization, especially within the last couple of years, our company has keep, is continually asking people to do more with less. And so using a system that really enhances that and allows you to do that is pretty awesome. Um, it doesn't totally you know, eliminate my stress load, but it definitely helps, which is um, a huge win for me if it makes my job more efficient um, and easier. I'm all about it. So. Uh, it also provides a huge benefit to our other cross-functional teams because I'm no longer searching for hours to find information. It's all available in one spot, really easy to export any data that I want um, and kind of manipulate it and have that available at my fingertips is really a huge success. I can track and analyze an array of materials and material performance attributes, which is really important when we're looking at new developments. Um, it also helps us eliminate a lot of duplicate work because all of our information is stored in one place. We've set those really clear processes and we're always putting the information in the same way. So this is all really helpful. Um, and then overall, since we've implemented all of these things, um, 
we've actually been able to decrease our testing load since 2015 by over 50 percent which is really huge um, and then we also have increased our time efficiencies significantly so overall i honestly i'm not sure i could do my current job if i don't have tech space um, so it's been a huge asset to me personally thank you nicole and and what about you bethany what about TechSpace at LL Bean? Yes, I I agree with Nicole. I don't think I could do my job without TechSpace. Um, that's definitely for sure. Um, before we had TechSpace, all of our information was housed in our PLM system, which were usually PDFs or Excel spreadsheets. Um, so whenever we wanted to um, compare and contrast and look at the data of various fabrics, it would require somebody to go in and actually look at the, the photos that were attached in PLM and create spreadsheets. So now that everything's in text base, where that data is already there, we can report out and we're not spending near as much time um, creating spreadsheets, which allows us to spend more time doing development and doing what we do best rather than um, doing manual work. So that has been a huge help for us. Um, it's been so great that um, everybody's seen the same information so that when we do get together, um, the meetings actually flow really well. So we're not second guessing our data because we know that it's accurate. Um, so that's that's been great. One of the other things too is TechSpace has been so good that we're looking at moving forward. So um, even into uh, CPSIA and our compliance testing, so those are done outside of a system as well. And so now we're looking at bringing those into TechSpace and we're excited to work with TechSpace and getting all of those reports in and seeing the efficiencies come back to us next year. And we'll talk about the efficiencies in our compliance testing. <laughs> Wonderful. And do you see any other next for LL Beam in your use of tech space, perhaps um, connecting with your third-party labs or something like that? Absolutely. Being able to um, have, um, in particular with compliance moving in, having our third-party labs like your BVs and ITS and those third-party labs connected is going to be really important, but also getting our mills and suppliers, um, maybe doing like what Pearl Azumi did, having some key vendors, some of our bigger vendors in it who we know currently use it to be able to share that data um, is definitely on the radar and just throwing it out there, putting sustainability into uh, tech space sometime would be awesome as well because that's the next phase for us is, as well and how we're capturing that data. Wonderful. Well, thanks, ladies. Um, you've both shared a lot of great information today that I hope the audience um, is finding interesting. And I think that we'll start to move on to some questions, as I see there's a couple that have come in. Um, but before we move on to those questions, I'd just like to remind you all in the audience that TechSpace can do the same automation and a lot of the benefits that we have talked about today with LL Bean and Pearl Azumi for all of you. As I mentioned earlier, our system is available full suite out of the box, and there's no need for any on-site technical support or large budgets. Getting started with us is as easy as signing up online with our professional program and growing it from there. Today we focused a lot on materials and testing because that's where both Bethany and Nicole are seeing a lot of benefits. But I'd like to remind you that that's not all we do. So if you're working with CPSC regulations, EU, or even RSL compliance initiatives, we can help you there as well as well as in many other areas that we don't have time to address to today in, in the webinar. So with that said, Heather, do we have a few questions that have come in from our webinar attendees that we can address? Yes, we do. Um, you can keep them coming as well. We'll get through as many as we can. But um, yes, I've got some here I can start you off with. I think this one's a question that's really focused to actually all of you or, or certainly um, both um, Nicole and uh, Bethany. So. You both mentioned uh, you run a PLM system in addition to using TechSpace. Why didn't you use your PLM system to do what TXB is doing for you? Uh, this is Nicole. So I will jump in first. 
Um, so through my journey as a material developer, I've been really fortunate to work with quite a few PLM systems. Um, and one thing that always seems to be lacking in this in those types of systems is essentially a robust infrastructure to manage material developments and testing. Um, many PLM systems are built with styles in mind and they're totally great for this, but aren't always as moldable and flexible um, to manage and track consistent testing standards for hundreds and thousands of materials. Um, so um, being able to do this in a system that you're able to export a lot of information at once um, into an Excel document. So like Bethany stated earlier, a lot of PLM systems kind of force you into PDFs and aren't um, very user friendly when you export information. So that's been a huge win. Um, and then another huge bonus uh, of TechSpace specifically is the support and openness you actually get from the TechSpace team. So um, I do have many of these the TechSpace um, support team on SpeedDAO, which they actually probably hate. But a benefit is that they're always taking my suggestions and improvements um, and always talking through if there's any potential system glitches. And they're always looking for opportunities to improve the system. What's great about this is that uh, they are constantly pushing these improvements out to actual all users and you never have to pay for any fancy upgrades. So in my opinion, that's why we continue to use TechSpace and why we feel it's such a huge um, benefit to our company. Great. And I would, I was going to say, I would echo um, exactly what Nicole said, um, but for us, um, what made us unique is that we do have the testing facility on site, and so we needed a place to capture that data, and the PLM systems just um, that are out there today don't capture that data. Um, a lot of people use third-party labs, um, which have their own testing modules and how they report out, but we needed a system that allowed us to report the data that we had. Um, so that was a critical point for us as to why uh, we chose TechSpace in addition to our PLM. That's great. Well, thanks both for that. That's really helpful. Um, OK, I think this one's focused slightly more to, to Bethany. Um, here's what it says. It says, we're worried that the time to implement a new system will be too hard. How was the setup process with TechSpace? Um, yeah, it, I'm not going to lie. It is going to be a difficult process. <laughs> um, I think it's really important um, to blueprint. Um, your processes first and understand how um, things flow in your organization. Um, once you have a really good understanding and you, and you feel that it's an efficient process, then um, definitely bring in to uh, tech space. For us, as I said, we have a testing facility on site and it's critical for us to be able to capture that data. And again, a PLM system just doesn't have that on its own. So, um, so we're not spending time in Excel spreadsheets and we're spending time inputting that data into text base and reporting out rather than um, getting the information. But for us, uh, a big thing is, is the lab and um, quality and, and research is really important. And so um, we got a lot of support from, from management because of that. And so um, I think it's important to also have management um, buy-in as well. That's great. Thanks, Bethany. Um, OK, this one's for Nicole. So you mentioned that per Lizumi um, was reduced uh, turn time and costs in half. How did you do that? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Great question, yeah. So at Pearl, we've done a lot of um, things since I've joined the team to help kind of reduce that testing and increase our time efficiency. Um, one of the big things is just setting those clear expectations of process. Um, so that's been a huge benefit for us and the consistency in how we're entering information. We've also been able to utilize um, a lot of kind of good benefits of the text-based team. So one thing we do is we use a what we call a batch update process. 
Um, so what this is, is we export a large sum of data and we set really clear expectations of how we analyze that data and then we send it over to the text-based team and instead of me sitting here for hours on end trying to figure out what we've tested already and what needs to be tested, the text-based team is able to run a system program. I, they're the IT experts, so they can walk you through it. But what they're able to do is actually run a program where it looks through our entire system to see if we've tested any, something already and whether or not we need to test it again. And then it'll actually generate a lab test for us. So this is a huge time savings um, because, you know, this season alone we have 130 new items and we test each of those twice, once in our in-house facility and once in our mill facility. So being able to save, you know, creating 300 plus tests is huge. Um, we also are able to assign uh, our mill testing to our mill partners specifically. So. Like I said earlier, we are connected through the system to a couple of our key mill partners. So using this connect access, we allow the mill partners to go into the system and actually update their testing on their own. So that eliminates me from going in and having to add their testing data into the system, send them back and forth questions on things that are missing or they use the wrong test method and um, then mark it complete. So they're able to do all that on their own which I feel like is a huge time saving and really empowers their team to better understand their material requirements. And then again, just setting those clear processes so we're not retesting items we've already tested before. That's excellent. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, okay, here's a question that's more directed um, really to, towards Kimberly, uh, sorry, to um, uh, Nicole. I, I'll get my words right, Marcy, Marcy, sorry. Um, is your system only for apparel and soft goods? Thanks, Heather. Um, and that's a great question because I think there is a lot of misconception that TechSpace is an apparel-focused company. And I understand that because it's really where the software was uh, originated. But the answer is no. And we're working today with many companies who are building hard goods from headphones to shoes or even bike frames. And we work with all of them. And in fact, um, Bethany, you can you can speak to this or back me up, but LL Bean is one of those companies who is using tech space for both soft goods and hard goods, and so it's a really good case study to to speak to the use in both areas for uh, material development and testing. Absolutely, yeah, we definitely use it. Um, as I said, we're a gear to apparel company, and so we definitely use tech space for both um, anywhere from sleeping bags to your button-up shirt <laughs> for sure yeah that's great thanks I hope that helps to um, answer any questions there if, incidentally if anybody's got any other questions please feel free to drop them in I'm just going through what we've got so if you have anything burning to uh, to ask our speakers today please please drop them through to the uh, questions uh, section um, this one I think is more uh, aimed at Bethany and Nicole so what advice would you give to a company who is considering a system like tech space and based upon your own experience um I'll, I'll i'll tackle that one first i think both i've heard both nicole and myself i think we would both agree is just understanding your processes um i know that bean spent quite a bit of time um doing that blueprint and understanding our processes and looking for efficiencies in the way that you know from mind to market as a, something is created in our mind and then it gets produced down to our customer. What is the process that goes on in between there? And understanding that process is, I think, really important. Um, and the other thing is, is you're, I don't, I don't, you're only as good as the data that you put in. So having a clear, precise process on how that data is put in and making it repeatable, I think that's also really important. What do you think, Nicole? Um, I agree with Bethany. So a theme you're going to get here is that Bethany and I love process and we love data. Um, so making sure you have a really clear process is super important, especially as you get more people in the system. Um, I would say I'm, I'm lucky but also cursed that uh, our team's really small, so I can really control um, 
the consistency in which we're entering information. If you're on a larger team, that gets more difficult. So having those clear processes is just um, much more important once you get on a bigger team. Uh, another thing that I think is really important um, through TechSpace, you're actually able to do a lot of customization. Um, and so I would challenge people to really be creative with how they're setting up that customization. Uh, a fun challenge that we've run into and that we've actually been able to creatively problem solve is managing bulk production as well in the system and how we capture four point, um, four point inspections and how we capture percentage of defective material. And those types of things aren't necessarily written out black and white in the system, but they are things that you can capture if you're a little creative with how you are setting something up. So I would just advise um, if you're looking at using the system, um, look at it for also the gray areas and be creative with how you're setting it up and really utilize the text-based support team to kind of problem solve any, any questions you might be having or things you're trying to get in the system that might not be clear on how you set it up. That's great. Thanks both. In fact, this question actually follows on quite nicely from that. So how much do you rely on internal IT support or external consultants to help you with this technology? Uh, yeah, I'll jump in first since I just uh, was kind of touching on that. So I actually don't rely on our internal support at all. Um, we don't have a very large uh, internal IT team that supports our data system. Um, so I would say I'm probably the largest support, our internal IT support, and I definitely have no IT background. Um, we do use the text-based team um, when necessary, but what's great about the system is it's customizable and you as a user, if you're a what they call a super user, um, you have right to actually set up the system based off of your needs. So you can set all of your testing protocols, you can set all your material specifications, and you don't really need any additional IT support. Um, so if you are you know, a, a smaller company, that's a huge benefit um, if you don't have that robust IT infrastructure. Yeah, and I'd like to tack on to that too. I think the biggest chunk of your IT support will come in the beginning um, when you're trying to load your data into the system. And we actually utilize TechSpace to do that for us, so that was really helpful. Um, but we're in the same boat. Um, our internal IT department doesn't even touch TechSpace. I think I'm the biggest supporter of it, and I too don't have an IT degree. Um, but I, we do have fantastic support from uh, Tech's TechSpace. I've actually been talking with them today before the webinar trying to figure out some of the issues that I've been experiencing. I think they're more user error, but um, they're fantastic with getting back to you right away and finding solutions for you. And going back to even like what um, Nicole was talking about with being creative on how you use your information, TechSpace is great with working and trying to help you make those, those creativities come to life through the system. And then sometimes they even make it into the system, which then is shared with the rest of the industry. So there's an added benefit to that as well. Excellent. It's always good to speak to a human as well, isn't it? That makes quite a lot of difference. Um, okay, let's, let's carry on. Um, do LL Bean and Perlazumi follow the standard tests like AATCC or ASTIM, uh, ASTM, sorry, or develop their own or both? Um, I can jump in first. So this is Nicole. Uh, we do all of the above. <laughs> we um, have specific tests that we run here. Uh, we use ASTM methods. We use AATCC methods. We use ISO methods. Um, so we just found which ones are most relevant for our business. Um, and that's what we've tested. We've also come up with some unique tests that we think is really important for our end consumers that we've developed and we continue to use on new material development. So all of the above. That's great. And yeah, beans the same way. We follow the same test methods, but if we don't find that there's a test method out there, we'll definitely uh, work to create one our own. Lovely, thanks. Thanks for that. Okay, um, what is the interface between TechSpace and the PLM system that holds the entire tech pack for the garments? Um, 
do you have to enter the materials in both places? Yes, Heather, um, this is Marcy from TechSpace. I'll take this question. Ooh, um, and thank you, that's a great question. So Nicole spoke to one of the methodologies that we use to um, integrate with PLM systems, and we can do it in many, many ways. But I, I will say with many of our companies and clients that we work with, and we're working with some very multi-billion dollar companies, not not in all cases do the systems have to connect. But to answer your your question specifically is no, you do not need to enter the materials in both places if we do an integration. And there's a couple of ways that we can do that. And the the um, the testing method that Nicole had mentioned uh, is just one of the ways where we can do some uh, reporting that we can uh, transfer that data right over from one system into the text-based system. But we can also integrate using an API and sit wherever we need to um, for the organizations we work with. So if material development is at the start, um, sometimes those materials will start in text space and then they can flow into PLM once they have been approved and ready for commercialization. Um, but we can also sit in the middle where we're, we're sending and receiving information back and forth. So hopefully that answers your question, but we definitely have that ability to integrate with your PLM system however you need and and we would work with your team um, at your organization in order to enable that. Lovely thanks for jumping in there Marcy. Um, you spoke of testing and applying tests to each item to minimize testing. How do you track traceability between fabric and each item? Um, I'll jump in so for testing in text space, um, how you track that all back to a specific material is you actually generate specific material specifications per fabric. So it's up to you how you want to set up your process. You can create unique identifiers or you can use a generic identifier. At Pearl, we set unique identifiers up for every single fabric. And then the, all the testing is actually stored in relation to a fabric. So none of it's stored outside of a material. So what's cool about the system is that you're able to view potentially all tests that have been completed on a specific fabric. Or if you wanted to look at something more broadly, you could look at maybe I want to see all abrasion tests that I've ever run on um, all fabrics. So you can really look at the materials in different ways, but all of the tests are assigned back to a fabric specific. So you'll always have that connection. Great. Thanks, Nicole. Um, Bethany, did you have anything to add to that one? You don't have to. Actually, Bean, uh, well, I was going to say Bean actually does the exact same thing. We have a unique identifier that goes back to each of the fabric as well. So we handle the um, we handle it the exact same way, actually. Oh, fantastic. OK, I think finally we've come to the last question. So um, thanks, everybody, for sending in their questions. There were a lot there. So do either brands utilize TextBase to communicate with or pull data from other industry databases? Uh, at Pearl, we do not. Um, all the information that we put in the system is uh, exclusive to Perl, and it is not um, any system. We don't import any other information from other systems um, besides, like I spoke to, as our batch update to dictate what our testing is. But that's it for us. Thanks, and Nicole. No, Bean, do, Bean does not. Thanks, Bethany. Okay. Well, well, and Heather, I'll jump in there as well because, um, and this is Marcy from TechSpace. Um, it's a great question. And as I had mentioned in sort of the closing of um, the earlier session, TechSpace uh, works in many different areas beyond just materials and testing. And uh, I see some of the, the other industries that are mentioned in this question, um, like the SAC, HIG, and ZDHC. And I just want to mention that um, Right now, TechSpace is not connected to pull directly from those other databases yet. 
but it is on our roadmap. And and we as an organization have been very involved in uh, the whole chemical management situation and, and are, even have our own tool uh, that we worked with the AFA to develop called VPEP. And uh, we're paying a lot of attention to ZDHC as well as these other organizations. And it's part of our roadmap to hopefully be able to make that integration happen um, so that you would be able to see certain certifications and uh, other chemical or environmental certifications that fabrics or trims or even fibers may have and be able to utilize within it the tool itself. That's great. Well, thanks for that, Marcy. That's really helpful. Um, I hope we've managed to uh, cover as many of the questions that um, that were burning in your minds after today's presentation. If there is anything else that you would like to ask after today, please feel free to either reach out to myself, which uh, you can do, heather at juststyle.com, or you can see on your screens there's a, a more information email address for TechSpace directly. So please feel free to get in touch with them uh, if you'd like a demo or any further information I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help you but thank you all so much for spending the last 50 minutes with us it's been really great to have you and you you sent in some fantastic questions um, and kept our speakers on their toes today as well as myself so thank you very much to Marcy and Nicole and Bethany for your time and all your effort today and it's been really interesting and I hope that's that's really hit the mark with our, our readers today. So um, thank you all so much and uh, hopefully speak to you all again very soon.